Fox Sports. We are Buffalo. We are Ohio. The Indians have won two series this season, and both of them have come in Texas. Now it's time to take that success north to the Windy City, where we have a doozy of a pitching matchup. Cy Young winner Corey Kluber, coming off one of the best games in Major League history, squares off against Sox ace Chris Sale, the six foot six Southpaw slinger, coming off an 11 strikeout performance his last time out. This Central Division showdown starts right now on Sports Time Ohio. Chicago, Illinois, city of broad shoulders, but those shoulders took quite a hit just a few days ago when the Cleveland Cavaliers knocked the Chicago Bulls out of the playoffs. Now we'll see if the Cleveland Indians can stop the Chicago White Sox five-game win streak tonight here at U.S. Cellular Field. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. Corey Kluber is on the hill for the Tribe tonight. He's coming off one of the best games we have ever seen. 18 strikeouts in all, Rick. One hit, shutout baseball over eight innings. And those 18 strikeouts, that's more than he had in his previous three starts combined. Well, he was as dominating as any pitcher could be. He had tremendous fastball command and some late break to his curveball, his cutter, and he also used that two-seamer, a couple of change-ups. 13 of his last 16 outs were strikeouts and I mean it was so much fun to watch Kluber only one other guy struck out that many guys in eight innings that was Randy Johnson and it's nice if he can get Corey Kluber back on track he hasn't pitched poorly all season long the only thing the offense has to do is go score him a few runs early and I think he'll be just fine there's nothing wrong with him well Chris Sale will be pitching tonight for Chicago he already has more 10 strikeout games than any pitcher in Chicago White Sox history Obviously a tough task ahead for the tribe. When we come back, Andre Knott will tell us what the Indians must do in order to be successful here tonight. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. By your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk, proud sponsors of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO.
absolutely picture perfect evening for baseball as the tribe and the White Sox renew their rivalry once again. Chris Sale will be on the hill for Chicago. Two years ago, they had their way with him. Beat him four times, hung an ERA of almost nine on him. Last year, he flipped the script on him. 257 ERA and three starts. And he was 1-0 against the Tribe. Let's go down to Andre Not What makes this guy so tough on hitters? Well, the velocity is one thing, Matt, that all the players said stand out about Chris Sell. And he's coming off his best start. Pitched eight innings, had 11 strikeouts and one walk. But a lot of players throughout the clubhouse have said the thing that you have to check out early on is his velocity. If he's at 96-95 with his changeup and slider, it's going to be a long night. If his velocity is in 94-93, it's a little bit easier. The other thing a lot of guys said is that the ball comes from most left-handers from almost center field. I guess this lefty, it comes from right center field. And it's hard to pick up when you're a lefty, when you're when you're a lefty because it basically comes from the box or behind you. There are a lot of guys saying it's working on a four-seamer that comes in on the right-handers, but a lot of them said, and Terry Francona said this, find the first good pitch and hit it. That's the best way to beat Chris Sale, guys. Yeah, and he's going to have to have fastball command. I watched his last start, and he was throwing it much more. But, uh, you know, if he's on with all his pitches, I mean, he's like Clover. This guy's a Cy Young candidate. Every year he goes out and toes the rubber. So if he's on his game, you've got to maximize everything you do. And you can see last year he's 1-0 in his three stars. The Indians owned him in 13. That's not going to happen again. I mean, you, you hope to go out there. You hope to get him a couple of times. Score early, and hopefully Kluber can shut their offense down. To your point, he's finished in the top six in the Cy Young voting each of the last three seasons. There's the Cy Young Award winner from last year, Corey Kluber. He'll be on the mound for the Tribe when we come back as they try to tee off against Chris Sale of the Chicago White Sox. And we're ready for baseball here in Chicago. The Indian starting lineup presented by Progressive Insurance for Terry Francona tonight. Jason Kipnis leads it off. He's fifth in the American League in batting average. Jose Ramirez in the two spot. Carlos Santana was a scratch late this afternoon from the lineup with lower back spasms. Michael Braley now leads the league in batting average. He's hitting third. Then it's Ryan Rayburn, Nick Swisher, and Mike Avilas, who's back with the club in batting six. Brandon Moss, Zach Walters, Roberto Perez rounded out. Our Northern Ohio Honda dealer starting pitcher is Chris Sale for the White Sox. Three and one on the year. High ERA. He had a rough outing against Minnesota earlier this year. 
coming off a win where you know he had a three game winless streak. Up until his last start and he had 11 punch outs in that game against the Milwaukee Brewers. Well as Andre told us what Terry Francona relate. Get that that first pitch you like get after it. Kipnis did. But fouls it back. Pops this one to shallow center. Out goes the shortstop Ramirez backpedaling in the left field. And he makes the catch one away. Let's check out that White Sox defense brought to you by Chrysler. In the outfield, it'll be Cabrera in left field. Eaton is in center. Garcia over and right. Gillespie at third. Ramirez is at short. Sanchez at second. Abreu at first with Flowers doing the catching. Ron Culpa calling the balls and strikes. Brian Knight, Dale Scott, the crew chief, Larry Vanover. Jose Ramirez takes a strike. This is the spot in the order where Ramirez flourished a year ago. He batted 299 when he batted in the second spot in the order in 42 starts there. And he promptly punches one in the right field and it's going to get down for a base hit. So Ramirez likes the two hole. And he gets the first hit of the game for the Indians with one out in the first inning. That's only a second hit against a left handed pitcher this year. He's on two for 29. This is an 0 2 pitch. You see where they wanted it up and in? Flowers put the glove up there. He didn't get it there. It was pretty much down the middle. And uh, Garcia ends up trying to slide and make the catch. It'll be a base hit for Ramirez. So here's Michael Brantley. Brantley now the American League's best hitter in terms of batting average. Hitting 348 overall. He surged to the top of the leaderboard by hitting 393 in his last 22 games. Ramirez had bluffed a move towards second, which is why Flowers came up ready to gun, but Jose had stopped. Brantley taking the strike. You know, when you see uh, Chris Sale pitch, you, Andre was talking about he comes out of right center field, but he's all arms and legs. You know, and this guy slings the ball up there at you, and it gets on you in a hurry. Liner to short, caught, throw back to first, not in time. Two away. Our window systems game time temperature tonight is 67 degrees. It was uh, in the low 80s this afternoon here in Chicago. It was downright hot. Yeah, right downtown sure was. Chicago. They tell us we're going to witness a change in the weather though in the next 24 hours. Temperature expected to be a high in the 60s tomorrow. Maybe it might not even get out of the 50s. Here's Ryan Rayburn. Rayburn batting 400 against left handed pitching this year. 333 overall on the season. 280 hitter against Chris Sale. Seven for 25. A couple of home runs against him as well. A little bit high. Well, you can see where Ryan Rayburn in this ballpark 11 homers, 50 RBIs, and a nice batting average. And he has the exact same numbers 11 homers, 50 RBIs, and almost double the games. That's a pitch that's going to be effective if he can hit in there against the right handers. He has that change up. He can come back down and in with his slider. Sale with a 2 1 offering on the way. 
And Rayburn had a rip, but fouls it back. The White Sox have played well in their home park. They're 10 and 5 on the year. They've won every series that they played in this ballpark. They have won five straight ball games. That 2 2 tied him up with a good fastball. Strikes him out to end the inning. No runs ahead, a man left. Now the White Sox come to bat when we come back. The first here in Chicago and for Robin Ventura the Sox starting lineup is brought to you by Toyota Adam Eaton at the top Melky Cabrera bat second Jose Abreu batting third riding a 12 game hitting streak Adam LaRoche Avisel Garcia and Connor Gillespie occupy the middle third then it's Alexei Ramirez Tyler Flowers and Carlos Sanchez and our northern Ohio Honda dealer starting pitcher is going to be Corey Kluber he finally got that first win in his very last start. 18 strikeouts you, you, you've heard all about it and this year his only start against the White Sox was a loss that came back April 22nd here gave up a career high 13 hits in his six innings so he's looking for a little bit of a revenge his first pitch is in there for a strike I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of strikes tonight by these two pitchers. Checked his swing and it's a foul into the Sox dugout. Eaton is one of four White Sox in the starting lineup tonight, riding a hit streak of six games or more. He's gone 11 for his last 28 during his six game tear. They need him to, to keep it going because he's only hitting 232 and only two RBIs, but his job is to get on base for the big boys, the table setters, him and Cabrera. Well, both the Indians and the White Sox have certainly turned it around offensively in the month of May, at least in terms of overall batting average. It's just inside. It's all right, good pitch. It's one thing that Kluber wanted to do. He's felt like he had to pitch inside a little more. They had their share of hits the last time. He's got to make them conscious of the inside part of the plate. Just a bit high. Full count. Well, Corey also felt that as special as that last start was for him, the 18 strikeouts, and I don't carry one start over to another. Yeah. Two, each <laughs> one independently. Swing and a miss. He strikes out Eaton. So he starts right where he finished in his last start. Keys to the game tonight brought to you by Wayside Furniture. 
Yeah, well, yeah, the lefties, anybody against Sale, I guess, but especially the lefties. Keep the first two off base. Makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. As you said, the table setters makes it a little easier to pitch to a Abreu, much like when you're facing Detroit and Miguel Cabrera. Yeah, any of those guys that you have the big bashers in the middle part of your line, if you can't, I mean, it gives you a little leeway to pitch around them if there's nobody on. You know, you don't have to go at them. Melky Cabrera has been hot and cold this year. He went 0 for 14 recently, and he's followed that up with six hits in his last 15 at bats. Well, he's just like Jose Ramirez for the Indians when it comes to the right side of the plate. Three for 37 this year. He's done very well on the, from the left side. Hitting 327. But from the right side of the plate, very bad. Three Forget for, about it. Yeah, three for 37. Three for 37. Oh, 81. You know, you, you were talking about Clover. He separates the stars. This guy's pitch to pitch. It may sound weird, and, and he is. He really is. He focuses uh, just one inning at a time, one hitter at a time, and basically when it comes down to it, one pitch at a time. But, I mean, with his delivery and, and the way he can re repeat his motion time after time, he, he's like a robot out there. Two strike pitch. Swing and a miss. He strikes out Melky Cabrera. And the first two have fanned for Chicago. Let's check out that tribe defense for you. Brought to you by Chrysler. Behind Clover tonight in the outfield. Walters gets the start in left field. It'll be Brantley over in center and Rayburn in right. Welcome back, Mike Avilas. He's at third base. Ramirez is at short. Kipnis at second. Moss is at first. Perez behind the dish. Now Jose Abreu steps in. And low and away ball one. Yeah this is the, the way you would love to face this guy. Every time he has an opportunity he's an RBI machine. And he's had a lot of success against the Indians in his career. His young career. Out of play to the right. Abreu has hit safely in 14 of his last 15 games against the Indians. Had a 350 clip with five homers, 12 ribbies. This is the guy I think it, it comes down to it, Matt. If the game's on the line, you pitch around him and you go to the next guy. 1-1 one, one pitch. Right back to the screen. Well, he's already proved it time and time again. He makes adjustments. He's a smart hitter. He's an RBI guy that he'll take whatever you give him. He'll go to the, the right side. You can't shift him. He, look at the defense as straight up as you can get for a big right handed power hitter. Upstairs. Two balls, two strikes. Kluber throws a breaking ball and Abreu strikes out. He whiffs the side to start the night. Look out.
Indians White Sox scoreless as we go to the second. Nick Swisher, Mike Avilas, Brandon Moss do up for the try. Swisher so far this year. Five out of 13 against the left handers. So from this side of the plate, he's been more than effective. Chris Sale and Corey Kluber have come out throwing darts here tonight. Well, he's got a couple of homers as well against Sale. But I'll tell you what, he's down early here, 0 2. Wake up call. That's the one I think he wanted to throw to Ramirez when they had an 0 2 count. He just left it over the plate. Yes, he did. On the appeal, he went around, says Brian Knight at first base. Sale with a couple of strikeouts now, one down in the second inning. Oh, yes, without a doubt. You know, you start getting geared up for that 95 96, and he's throwing it at that speed early. Then he drops the slider on in. Once you get started, you cannot hold up, and he's establishing that heater early. Mike Avilas back with the club after spending time on the family emergency medical list. Welcome back, Mike. Here's Chris Sale. Now the 0-2 upstairs with it. Tell you one thing, Chris Sale is getting after his fastball tonight early. That fastball zips low. First time they faced him this year, and you know, when you're throwing darts like these guys are, you can go through that lineup the first time. And just locate that fastball and maybe an occasional change up or one little spinner if need be. The full count payoff pitch pop back. Oh, Vilas, I mean, for missing time, that's a pretty good job of getting the bat on the ball. As you said, he's throwing 96 and then he comes with that 83 mile an hour off speed pitch. Sends this one to center field, but a routine play, two down. Andre not has some news from down in the Indians dugout. Yes, uh, the fifth spot for the Indians is rotated throughout the year. Bruce Chen was the last guy to have the fifth spot. And today, via Twitter, just the way Rick Manning would retire, Bruce Chen has just <laughs> gone on Twitter. And he said, today, I would like to announce my retirement. For the last 22 years, I've been doing what I love for a living, and I feel blessed and fortunate. He went on to thank the Indians and other teams he's played for, guys. But from the sounds of Twitter and Bruce Chen himself, and I've checked around, he's retired from baseball, something Tito Francona told us was possible. So Chen will not be back with the Indians as he's retired. All right, thanks, Andre. Yeah, there comes a point in time in everyone's career you have to move on. And he said he had a very long and a very good career. Yes, it all did. comes down to it. What was he, the second uh, winningest Panamanian pitcher? Only Mariano Rivera. Right. Had more. So, but you know what? He's a terrific well, guy. Good luck to him. He's got a lot of friends in the game, so. Right. I, I bet he stays in the game in some way, shape, or form. 2 1 pitch to Brandon Moss. Swung on and missed. Sale really pulled the string on him. Moss was not in the original starting lineup, but with Carlos Santana ailing. Terry Francona went to Moss at first base. Zach Walters switch hitter waits on deck. Payoff pitch. How about that Brandon Moss works the count takes the walk. Second base runner for the tribe and a two out. Base runner for Zach Walters. Indi uh, the today's injury report brought to you by the injury attorneys at Elk and Elk. Former Indian Matt Albers.
Rob Brantley and Nate Jones, the only notables on the White Sox injury report. So all in all, they're a pretty healthy group. Yeah, I would say so. Zach Walters looks it's up high ball one. Here's Matt Albers. Smashed up the middle with the shortstop. Ramirez is there, and they'll force Moss to end the inning. Middle of the second, no score. Corey Kluber struck out the side in the first, so he's whiffed 18 of the last 22 that he has faced in his previous seven innings. Uh, Fox, that's like Little League Whew. is what it is, and, and that is hard to do. This is the major leagues. And the Cardinals, you know, first time he's faced them, but they're a pretty good offense. The last time I looked. Yeah. Adam LaRoche will lead off for Chicago. And he's riding a six game hitting streak coming in. Perfect cutter on the outside corner. Boy, these I think these pitchers know that they're pitching against each other. They got to put zeros on the board. You know what I mean? They they may admit that all right, uh, I don't have to face them. I got to face their lineup, but they're coming after it. That's four straight punch outs for Kluber to start tonight as he makes quick work of LaRoche. Let's make this our circle K strikeout. He goes up and out of the zone, and that's when Corey is at his best. You get ahead 0-2, he gets a lot of hitters to chase out of the zone, whether it's that fastball upstairs, that, that he's got a curveball that he can throw down and in. He knows how to put you away, and that's why hitters, you may see him with some low pitch innings because they'll try and get after him early, and I don't blame him. Good matchup here. Garcia is the second best hitter in the American League right now. He's batting 346 just behind Michael Brantley. And he's risen to the top of the charts by batting 403 since April 24th. So he's that's a pretty good stretch. That's yeah. almost a month now. Yeah. Well, he and Brantley in the same yeah. category when you talk about over the last month mm -hmm. they've both been very hot. This guy He's a very good hitter. He was hurt last year, hurt his uh, shoulder early in the year, and uh, you know missed most of the year. He came back, and this guy uses the whole field. He's going to be a very good hitter. He's got some power. He's a strong young man. 
once he gets to know the pitchers in the league. Here we go again though Rick Kluber with an 0 2 count. Garcia shoots that's foul. a terrific job of just following that pitch off. Kluber continues to carve them up. Five straight strikeouts to start the night. That's it's incredible. I mean, after what we witnessed in his last start, he hasn't missed a beat. He comes right back, and the first five guys have gone down swinging. Look at that. And one more. After he fouled off a very good pitch, he expanded that zone a little bit more and got Garcia to chase. <laughs> They're having they a meeting in there, aren't no, they? There's no meeting. Hey, man, <laughs> you just better, if you hit it, you better put it in play. <laughs> Don't fall it off. Connor Gillespie takes a strike cutter over the outside corner. Even Gillespie's picked it up here of late. Eight hits in his last seven games. Oh. That looked like a perfect pitch. Well, he hasn't missed the strike zone many times. Let's check it out on our Nissan pitch tracker. Little wraparound, mm. yeah, a little off the plate. But I'll tell you what, you keep throwing that pitch by the seventh inning, you may be getting that call to strike. The 1 1 to Gillespie. Fastball up and out of the zone. It's about as much emotion as you'll see from Kluber. He just he kind of patted himself on the thigh. A little frustration that maybe overthrew. Big chopper to first. <laughs> Chicago's put a ball in play. But Kluber has retired all six that he has faced so far. Twenty fifteen with the MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. You can stay connected with live radio broadcast stats, breaking news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Roberto Perez will bat here in the third to start for the trot. And he takes slow ball one.
the added dimension that makes this a, a fun game to watch is the different styles between Kluber and Sale. Yeah, they're both power pitchers, but there's a ball to the gap in right center field. We've got extra bases. Roberto Perez on his way to second with a leadoff double here in the third. The Indians second hit of the night. Yeah, they both go about their, their craft a different way. They both have outstanding stuff. Here's the second hit for the Indians. And, you know, you look at that line and you'd say, who's going to get hits against Sale? You say, I really don't know, but you wouldn't think it would be Ramirez and Perez. And Perez gets the double. Well, you pointed it out. Ramirez was one for 28 against lefties coming in. And Roberto Perez was two for his last 27. Yeah. Gets his second double of the year. Kitna squares, pulls it back. Ball popped loose for a moment, but Flowers jumped on it quickly. Now, this is where you really have to take advantage when you have a situation. Tough guy to bunt against, though? Yes. For a left -handed he hitter? Yes, he is. Tough guy to, yes. He's tough enough to hit, let alone bunt. And people say it's easier to bunt. It's not really. This guy is all arms and legs, and you know, you've got a guy, a slow guy on second base that you got to lay down a pretty good bunt. Well, it's 2 and 0 now for Kipnis, but you have to uh, you have to take advantage of situations with good pitchers on the mound. You get them on, you got to get them over and in. Kipnis did this twice in Texas, if you remember. Well, he knows his job here is sure to get the runner over, whether it's bunt, whether it's get it on the ground. You know, you're a hitter, you, you you know it. If you feel you can bunt him over, you'll do it. If not, you got to try and pull him over. Now he squares, puts Bingo. a good bunt down. How about that? Gillespie throws off balance, and they just did get him by a quarter of a step, maybe. He That's was in midair, reaching for the bag with his foot when the ball reached Abreu. That's, so. that's the bonus, though. He would have got a bonus if he gets that base hit. He sacrifices him to third. Good job. Yeah, they had him. He, he, his foot was on the way down when it went into the glove of Abreu. So now the infield's going to come in. It's up to Ramirez to try and put this ball in play. He threw two fastballs by him. The first at bat and had him down 0-2 and made a mistake with the pitch. See if he elevates it and tries to throw it by him. Just like that. It'll be belt high and above. If you're Perez, you better be heads up on anything in the dirt. If, if he should throw a slider here, I don't know if I don't think he will. But you got to look into the dirt. Out of play to the right. Yesterday in Texas, Jose Ramirez flied out all four times he was at the plate. <laughs> That's, now you'd love to have one of those. Yes, you would. But you got a good arm in right field in Garcia. You know this this outfield not bad for throwing the baseball from what we understand. Well here you go right field this near the line good. Garcia makes the catch Perez tags he's coming home here's the throw he is safe at the play. There we go and the Indians jump out on top one to nothing. Jose Ramirez with his fifth run batted in on the year. Well and the thing that made that. Uh, Good is that Garcia was going away from the play. He's going toward the line. He had to plant and turn around and throw. And he couldn't get it right on line. He's got strong enough arm to get it there, but it was up the line. Perez scores. Good job by Ramirez. Great job by Kipnis. Get him on, get him over. They got him in. One nothing lead. Terry Francona loves it. You yeah, have Indians to love have the early Look at the two guys that did it that created the run, really. Now Brantley with a short hop to short and Ramirez pulled a bray you off the bag but they make the play to end the inning. Perez needs a little pants repair. One nothing Cleveland.
Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. One nothing Cleveland as we go to the bottom of the third. Corey has struck out five of the six he has faced. Coming off an 18 strikeout performance in his last game. And he looks every bit as good, if not better, at the start here tonight. Alexei Ramirez pops See. it to center. Kipnis says, I'll take it. He does. I no hope way. he has a couple innings like this where he gives up a, you know, a seven pitch inning and things like that. I really do. Our stat of the game brought to you by Buick. Swing and miss percentage. Look at one and two. Salazar and Kluber. Yeah, that's pretty. And Carrasco's on the board, too. So three and so of is the Indian Sale. starters yeah, and then pretty good. Sale. Well, they have it, but you don't, you know, what happens when they get a lot of strikeouts, sometimes that pitch count goes up there if they're mixing it in and they have two, mm -hmm. two counts. And that's why I'd like to see Kluber with a few easy innings getting after the first pitches. That'll keep him in the game a little bit longer. Tyler Flowers takes up high ball one. Well, Terry Francona was certainly appreciative of Carlos Carrasco. The effort he gave him yesterday going the distance so you didn't have to get into your bullpen. The way Kluber looks here at the outset, he might not have to use him again. Well, it comes down to pitches. One one count on Flowers. Oh, what a pitch. You can see Flowers gave up on it from the get go. Well, the hitters, when they don't react to pitches, they know one thing they can't hit it. You know, so they don't even bother offering it. Swing and a miss. He strikes him out. Six K's for Kluber. Two down in the third. All six have been swinging. Yeah, and watch him expand the zone now. This is out of the zone. Looks like a strike, but by the time it gets to the plate, it's out of the zone. You're not going to hit that You're, and you can't foul it off as a hitter. But see what we're seeing tonight is what we didn't see in his early starts this year where he's ahead in the count and you pointed that out like you hitters aren't going to chase that slider if it's two and oh two right. and one. No they won't don't have to swing it. They don't have to swing different that. story when you're fighting from behind. Right but he's making some quality pitches to get ahead though where before hitters were getting after him early they were hitting about 450 to 500 on the first two pitches in the at bat and what we're seeing tonight is he's working all quadrants in yes. out up down. He, yes he is. Yes he did. And it's 0 and 2. He's got hitters talking to themselves and it's only the first time through the lineup. Carlos Sanchez just got recalled from Triple A on Friday. 0 2 pitch oh. struck him out looking fastball over the inside corner. And Corey Kluber strikes out seven of the first nine Sox hitters to start the night.
untouchable so far here tonight. Fourth inning now. Indians leading one to nothing. Ryan Rayburn will lead it off. Big curveball drops in for a strike for yeah. Chris Sale. First pitch. Let me throw that. Give me over breaking ball. Strike one. Because it was with Power City the first time through. Change up. Well, Chris Sale knows Ryan Rayburn is a good fastball hitter, especially early in the count. Chops this one a third. Nice pick by Gillespie. Yes, it was. One away. Time now for our Levin player profile. Notable first round picks of the 2010 draft when Chris Sale was the 13th overall selection. I still think the crazy thing about Chris Sale is that when he was a freshman in high school, he was 5'8, weighed 100 pounds. Well, you now he's 6'2 or 6'3, six and he weighs six. 100 pounds. He's 6'6. <laughs> six, 6'6, six. Six, six, and he still weighs the same. Yeah. <laughs> He is a, a skinny little guy that can get it up there all arms and legs. Well the amazing thing is Rick that his dad was grandfather was a great swimmer. He was 6 3. His dad was 6 3. And at one point his dad said I was 6 3 and 158 pounds and I was the chubby one. <laughs> and now, now Chris sailed 6 6 and 185. He's he's the behemoth oh, man. of the sail clan. A little bit outside. Well, he was the first one to make it to the big leagues out of his draft. I mean, uh, and the Harper that was the number one pick that year. What a year that kid's having, huh? Yeah. Off to a tremendous start. Now the, the draft is a crazy, unpredictable mess. It is. It seems like there's a lot more number ones that don't make it. Than that do. Swisher looks at a ball outside. Now the payoff pitch to Swish. It's outside. Ball four and Sale knew it. Today, Chris Sale was blowing off a little steam before his start. A little remote dune buggy action. You know who used to love those? Sandy Allen. Yeah, exactly. Remember right. that? I sure do. Sandy used to do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Crash and burn. Mike Avilas fly to center his first time up. Took a fastball for a strike. Side corner. And now Avila's down on the count. Nothing in two. Did he go? Yes, he did. Says first base up by Brian Knight. Two down. Hey, Indians Reds, Saturday, progressive field. Get your tickets and get there early. Help us celebrate my partner's 40th anniversary of his major league debut. We'll be giving away the red 1975 jerseys. It's going to be a great night. Hope you can make it down there. Brandon Moss taking a fastball in there for a strike. Moss with a walk his first time up. You know the fact that Andre said hitters say the ball from sale comes out of right center field. Yeah. If you're a left hand hitter would you open up a little bit more than usual against him. Well. Uh, to I get a better know. look. You could. I mean you want to get both eyes on it doesn't mean you're. Oh look at look this. Look at this. Beauty. Thing of beauty. Brandon Moss. Little cue shot right up the third base line. 
And he's got an infield single to keep the inning alive. Yeah, that's you know what that that's he had the day off. He was forced into the lineup, so you know what that's for getting in here and hanging up, hanging tough against the left-hander. Looked like it was an off-speed pitch. It goes off the end of the bat and it stayed on the dirt. And Gillespie wanted to try and make a play that was going to stay fair anyway. So yeah, nothing he, knew he could it. do with it. So it's a two-out single. It would give uh, runners at first and second now with two outs. You know, if you to answer your question, if you're opening up, you got to make sure if you do to, to to see it a little better, you still have to close up when you go to hit the ball. Yeah. Or just get on the plate and open up and start running and hope you hit your bat. <laughs> well, Zach Walters made contact his first time up, sent a ball to shortstop for the final out of the second inning. Right back. Terry Francona, Jason Kipnis talking it over in the dugout. Kipnis laid down a sacrifice. They got Roberto Perez to third when Jose Ramirez then got him home with a sack fly for the game's only run. There's the big breaking ball. He wanted to come out, he go out and go after. Watch his hands, and then he sees it coming in, and he just freezes. Now the one-two, just a bit outside, and that'll even the count up. Followed that big breaking ball coming inside with a change up like a dead fish going down and away. Wanted to get him to swing at that pitch and chase it. Walters did not. Two twos hit pretty well to center field. And making the catch is Eaton. Well, he hit it hard. But Eaton did a nice job to run it down, and the Indians strand a couple here in the fourth. Our AT&T U-verse rewind. First time through the order, Corey Kluber just simply overmatched the White Sox lineup. Well, and he was ahead of so many hitters, and he just put them away. They were all swings until the last one, where it was a call at the hip right there. It goes back over. Struck out seven of the nine hitters. First Picked time through. right where he left off in his last start. So, re rack them. Let's play again. Adam Eaton takes inside ball one.
swung on and missed at that cutter. But that first pitch set it up fastball inside. He went right back in there a little bit slower but he sees it and then by the time he swings at it it's down and in. Because it's it's breaking in on his hands. Back out of play. And the count is one and two. One two pitch. Just missed inside. Back to the four seamer. He's really mixing the four seamer and the cutter as well as the slider. Well here tonight. The two two to center field back is Brantley and makes the catch one away. <laughs> Check out our Kia in the driver's seat on Corey Kluber tonight. Well, the numbers he put up his last start were just incredible. Watching that game was more than impressive. And well, what he's doing here yeah, tonight, you're just you're shaking your head going, wow. It's a continuation of what we just watched five days ago. Different ballpark. A little bit outside. One of the rare times tonight he's fallen behind. Two and oh. That's the pitch he gave up his only hit on in the St. Louis game was to Johnny Peralta 2 0. Four seam fastball inside corner. Swing and a miss. Might have been that cutter it again was, over the outside part of the play. Uh, yeah, it was a hard cutter, but it didn't come down as much. You see, it sort of call that maybe a little backup, but it was a strike anyway. Broke his bat, base hit center field. White Sox have their first base runner. <laughs> Little breaking ball down and in. It sounded like it broke the bat of Cabrera. Finds the right spot. There it is. Down and in. He goes back up the middle with it. So the first hit of the night comes in the fourth inning with one out. Now it's Jose Abreu. In the head, strike one. Base hit left field. Abreu pulls it. Right between third and short back to back singles here in the fourth inning and for Jose Abreu that's a 13 game hitting streak right now watch his him. hands watch his hands that ball was in off the plate and he brought his hands and that's what makes him a great hitter that ball was in off the plate boy and he was able to pull him in and hit it hard between the hole between short and third that's a great piece of hitting so it's back to back singles. Well, I mean, his last 18 games, not including tonight, just two extra base hits. So he'll take his singles 
his and move time on. will come. Home run hitters, they get it, they come in bunch. Flurry, yeah. You know, when he gets on a, a, a roll and they, they make mistakes, he'll hit his. It's getting the base hits when you're not hitting the home runs that make it tough for the big boys. Foul territory. Walters gave it a look, can't get to it. He's a, he's a good hitter. Boy, he's fun to watch. And we get the opportunity to watch him. You talk about, you know, him, you got Cabrera in this division. You've got some great hitters. Michael Brantley. Yeah, you've got some great hitters. Right now, Central Jason Kipnis is tearing it up, too. Yes, he is. And you've got Garcia, who's on deck. Yeah. Really good hitters in the Central. Kansas City's got some Boy, pretty good looking hitters this year. year. Adam LaRoche, 0 1 count, swing and a miss at a 95 mile an hour fastball. Ninety five's got to be that. There it is. The four seamer looked like he just got a piece of it right into the glove of Perez. Yes, he did. He chased one in the dirt strikes out two down. Yeah, he Eight got K him. for Kluber. Throw one out of the zone. He was getting after it. Let's uh, check out the sequence here. You're going to see a good fastball had movement going away. He followed it off a fastball that stayed right there. Four seam action. Now let's go cut her down and in. He couldn't hold up. Thinking he was getting the fastball, but it went down. Out number two, strikeout number eight. Now, obviously, El Garcia. Struck out swinging his first time up. Lifted towards center, right center, in the gap, and a nice running catch by Ryan Rayburn. That ball kept failing his way. And the inning is over. No runs, two hits, two left. One nothing Cleveland through four. Game-changing all-new Ford F-150. The future is tough. One nothing. Cleveland leads it. Fifth inning. Roberto Perez to lead it off. He led off the third inning with a double to right center field, and that would eventually lead to the game's only run thus far. 
Tees off, pops it high in the air. Late break by Garcia, and he still recovers in time to make the catch. That time of night, man. I was going to say, see. yeah, tough to pick it up. Isn't yep, it? that sure is. You get up there, and uh, you can lose it out in the twilight. Back in the third, it was the double by Perez, and then they really executed well. And then Kipnis, tell you what, bunts a tough pitch on the inside corner, and they, he gets the run of the third. And then Ramirez puts a high fastball in play. Garcia going toward the line. He's got to spin the move, but they get the run home. And the execution, it's exactly what you have to do when you're facing a good pitcher. When you get an opportunity, take advantage of it, and they did that. It was Perez, uh, Kipnis, and Ramirez doing the executing. Jason pops that one foul, and that's going to find its way to the seats. You know, as a team, when you do that through 162 games, and it's not going to happen all the time, but when you do it for somebody, someone else does it for you, and, it, you know, it comes back around, you know, because guys are conscious of having to do that. And even when you're not playing, facing a tough guy like Sale, you still have to concentrate and do it consistently. Sale gets ahead of Kipnis now, one and two. One in front of the plate. Two balls, two strikes, one out here in the fifth. That's when you know you're really seeing the ball well. It's yeah. a tough pitch. You know what? Not that you're going to swing at it anyway, but. You're right. When you have to face a guy like Sale, you want to face it when you're swinging the bat like Jason is. And you still come up empty. Wow, he just ran that one up to 97 miles an hour. And there are now two down here in the inning. Well, Friday night, it's going to be uh, Dollar Dog Night. The Cincinnati Reds are going to be in town. Also, after the ball game, we're going to have our very first post game fireworks show. That'll be presented by Wayside Furniture. Just go to Indians.com. Jose Ramirez singled his first time up. Go figure all the troubles he's had against left handed pitching this year hitting from the right side of the plate. And against one of the best in the game he's had his best night at the plate on an 0 2 pitch too. He got the base hit on. Slowly run to third. Gillespie barehand grab it, no play. And Jose has his second hit of the ball game. Yeah, that's the second infield hit for the Indians in the last two innings. Time for yesterday's great clip of the game. Michael Brantley providing the Indians only offense. Boy, it was a frustrating game, as Terry Francona said afterwards. We had so many opportunities, but we just didn't hit well. With runners in scoring position, and then late in the game, our opportunities dried up. Well, one for nine the first five innings, and then the rest of the game was uh, see you later. They didn't yeah. have a base runner, did they? Yeah, they a lot of one, two, three innings toward the end. Brantley 0 for 2 tonight. Well, Rick, after Brantley's RBI double, which was in the fifth inning, had one hit, hit two base runners the rest okay. of the game, one an intentional walk later that inning. Right. And then a two out single in the ninth by Kipnis. That was it. And Michael takes. Chris Sale had. Uh, to miss five games. He was suspended because they remember that uh, brawl they had with the Kansas City Royals. He served his suspension, came back. It's only missing one start or actually pitching on with one more day rest. Yeah, but it boils down to when you're a pitcher. Boy, elevated heater. And it's 0 and 2. Well, when you can get it up above the belt, 
And right there, you can see that's a good pitch. Tough to get to. Jose Ramirez taking his lead at first. Well, that was a good pitch to run on, but he decided not to go. Now it's two and two for Brantley. Well, it's almost like you have to guess. And with Michael Brantley, you're right. Here, I know. You know, you can hit one to the gap. So there's really, you would like to see him run, but it's a guessing game. And if you guess wrong, then you, you, you're running with Brantley at the plate. I know there's two outs if he's buried. Swung on and missed. Inning over. Fifth strikeout for sale. Middle of the fifth, one nothing Cleveland. Seven of their last eight. They're scoring more, hitting better, pitching better. That's usually what happens in a winning streak, right? Did you ever see, yeah, a team when they go on a winning streak, their offense is up to six runs a game, it seems like. And good offense makes that bullpen that much better. Yeah. You know, and your starters that can settle down. That's a, that's a great combination for every team. Yeah, when you're scoring almost six runs a game, you better it win. takes the pressure off of everybody yeah. in the pitching. You better win. Connor Gillespie. Ground out his first time up. And it seems like when you, when you go through those winning streaks, guys are hitting better with runners in scoring position. They're not panicking. Yeah, but you go through, uh, uh, you know, peaks and valleys with that. Every team does. I'd also be willing to wager that during a win streak or a stretch of games where you win out eight out of ten, you're scoring first probably a lot too. Yeah, that that always. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem like it should be that big of a deal, but boy, just getting that first run on the board seems to make a huge difference. Might be his first three ball count. I think it is. I don't recall one. Oh, 
And a one-hop smash gets by Kipnis. In the shallow right, Gillespie will hold with a leadoff single. Well, and that's the difference. Corey Glover's going to go at him with a, a fastball. He's not going to walk the leadoff man, and he hit it right on the nose. Kipnis said that's like an impossible play. It's a do-or-die play. You either make a spectacular play with that hop, it's a base hit. So, but it's a 3-1 count, and, and that shows you what happens. Hitters get a little more selective, and they, they can sit on one pitch. So Gillespie picked on a fastball. He got himself a base hit. Now here's Alexei Ramirez who popped up on the infield his first time up. Oh. Ramirez is riding an 11 game hitting streak. Yet his season average still only at 250. Coming into tonight. Yeah, they started out poorly. The home run ball, they they haven't been hitting, you know, as a team. Normally they're a home run hitting team. Double play ball to short Ramirez to Kipnis. There's one on to first. And nice stretch by Moss. They turn two. There you go. The two for one. Just what they're looking for. Easy flip for Ramirez, and there you go. Kipnis turns it. Nice stretch by Moss. Let's go down to Andre Nott, who has the latest on Jan Gomes and his uh, quest to return to the big league. Jan Gomes put in five innings today with the Columbus Clippers. Everything went well for him. He went 0 for 3 with two Ks. And, guys, he may be back for the weekend so he can wear his red jersey with Rick and everybody. Oh, that's Come great this weekend. We could. He's going to go five. He's going to go seven innings on Wednesday, and we'll know more after that, guys. All right. Thanks, Andre. That's certainly very encouraging. Yes, it is. Tyler Flowers swings at a first pitch breaking ball. Bottom of the zone, he lays off one and one. Swung at it again. Is that a case where he went up there guessing first pitch? Normally, you wouldn't see guys swing at a first well, pitch. Well, yes, ball. they want to get after him early. He does want to get buried again now. He's down to the count one, two, and it may become. A little bit bigger of a breaking ball here. He went down his first time. Oh, <laughs> just backed him up and see you later. Oh, man. Strikeout number nine for Kluber. Five complete. It remains Cleveland one, Chicago nothing.
Indians and White Sox. Indians Live gets it started at 7.30. All the action at 8. Right here on Sports Time Ohio, it'll be Trevor Bauer against Jose Quintana tomorrow. Ryan Rayburn, Nick Swisher, Mike Avila is due for the tribe here in the sixth. Just above the belt. Tough to catch up to. Sale has had an electric fastball. Tonight. I'll tell you what, he has gone out there and yeah, he's had really good stuff. He's five strikeouts, two walks. The Indians have four hits, two of them infield hits. Oh, call on the inside corner. Raber can't believe it. He's buried 0 and 2 now. Yeah, when two guys that can put you away are, are both dealing, it's you, you're not going to get many pitches to hit. If you get one in that bat, you better not miss it. And then when they get ahead of you, they they can they have so many ways they can put you away. Two pitch. Get pretty well to center, deep center. Back is Eaton, still going back and makes the catch right in front of the track. Two away, or one away, excuse me. In game recap brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Not much to tell you about outside of the fantastic pitching. Here's all the scoring Jose Ramirez with the sack fly, scoring Roberto Perez, who led off the inning with a double. Other than that, it's been dynamite, lights out pitching. Yeah, you know, a lot of times you, you get into a game like this and, you, and you're looking for that pitching matchup, Kluber against Sale, and it's lived up to its hype right now. Well, it sure has. Oh. You expect these two strong. to go at it and pitch this way. Yeah, but you're right. But for some reason, it doesn't. It doesn't a lot work of times, out that it can way. be disappointing. Yeah. Yes. You know, this may not be the only time this year because we'll have many more times that we will play the White Sox. So. It's fun when you can get a matchup like this. And it lives up. When you're a hitter and you're in a game like this, and, and the guy on the, oh, the other, on the bump is just dominating, like, right. Do you find yourself talking to the catcher when you go up there? Does he talk to hitters like, boys, you got no shot tonight? No, like well, I, they may say something. If you were like a Thurman Munson or something like that, hey, you're going to get a fastball, you better swing. <laughs> you know, something like that. But you know. That if they make their pitches, you're not going to be. You got to capitalize. Nick Swisher flies to deep center, two down. Time for a Mazda game break. Here's Al Pulaski. Boy, another great pitching matchup in New York where the Cardinals and Mets are tied 1 1 in the ninth. But the Cardinals came back, didn't they? I mean, to, to score. To tie, yeah. Yeah, they in the scored ninth, in the ninth. I wonder, wonder if they did that off Harvey or Har Harvey was gone. He went eight shutout, so it was off the bullpen. <laughs> got him off the, got the run off the closer. Meanwhile, John Lackey was on the other side of that for the Cardinals. Indians go one, two, three. We go to the bottom of the six. It's still one nothing, Cleveland.
It's an access to Tribe Rewards, and today's Tribe Rewards TV code is Mickey. There's the big Mick. Visit Indians.com slash season tickets for the complete details. Carlos Sanchez, the number nine hitter, will lead off here in the bottom of the sixth for Chicago. Little changeup. That's one of the first changeups I've seen Kluber throw tonight. Slowly chopped, it gets by Kluber. Kipnis has to hurry. Got him. Beautiful. Corey Kluber tonight has really thrown everything very well, but his slider has been a sharp, late breaking pitch, and he's been able to use it with two strikes to get the strikeouts, a lot of swings and misses. And that's a pitch that. And, uh, you know, after his first three starts, I'd say maybe two starts after that, it didn't have that tilt to it. But in the last couple of starts, that tilt is back, and it's sharp breaking. But it all comes off the fastball. Right there. The, and what makes Kluber so tough every pitch comes out of that same slot, you know, and it's a little crossfire where he comes out and that arm comes up But every pitch, whether it's the cutter, the slider, the fastball or the change, it's, a, it's it's all coming out of the same spot and hitters have a tough time recognizing that pitch. That's why you see the swings you do off Corey Kluber. Fair ball. This is trouble. Yeah, he's not going to stop. Eaton will go all the way to third base. It's a one-out triple. All right, that's just what the White Sox needed. That slider we were just showing you, he beats this one into the ground. He didn't get it in enough, but he hits on top of it, and it was a fair ball. Just stayed down the line and into the corner and he is going to keep his head down and run. That'll be his second triple. And so now Chicago with an opportunity to tie it up. Yeah you bring the infield in and now's the time you go for the punchy if you're Clover. Melky Cabrera singled his last time up. It was the first hit of the game. And he broke his bat and sent one into center field. Pop back out of play. Kept slicing away. They wanted to elevate the fastball and either get him to pop it up. And you could tell I was watching Cabrera as that ball after it went off the bat. He didn't run. He was watching, watching, and he knew it was going to slice foul. So now you have an opportunity to go for the punch out. You got him down in the count 0 2. See if you can get him a chase for a pitch or two. He struck him out. Boy, how, I mean, how nice is that? Number 10 for Kluber. Able to come back. And I mean, it didn't take him long. It was just a, a three pitch at bat. Let's look at the sequence. There he, fastball right there. Hit me. Fouled it off. He tried to elevate it. And he sliced that one foul. And now he's going to get him to chase with the little cutter down. Boy, that's going to be our McDonald's. I'm loving it. Need a strikeout? Go get it. All right, so here we go. This is the matchup. 
This is the we matchup I'd be really careful about. He struck out Abreu first time up. Abreu singled the left his last time up. And he brought his hands in on the inside part of the plate. So I'm thinking the big man here is going to be looking away with that guy, slider or something. And the guy on deck, he has struck out twice. Yes. Boy, there's that. That but a, but a, but a slider? Or was that a low cutter again? Well, 58% of his pitches fastballs. His three 39 breaking balls. I think that includes the cutter, though. Yeah, that has to be. That 96 mile an hour fastball reaching back for a little something extra. Yeah, now's the time when you get the good hitters. This is when you need the punch out. He did it to Cabrera. You just need an out here. You don't have to, but you got you just have to be careful. You can't make a mistake with this big man. Swung out and missed Chase here. He comes. He's coming home. And he is safe at the plate. The ball got away from Perez. Oh my goodness. Boy, he had him dead to right. The White Sox tie the game. On a ball that wasn't more than 10 feet away from home plate. He picked it up and like he was going to throw it back to him. Watch this. Eaton didn't hesitate. And then he realized he was coming and he can't hold on to the ball. If he holds on to it, he's out. The ball gets knocked out of his glove. That's great hustle by Eaton, but he was a dead duck. Well, I think he had it in his bare hand. And the bare hand was inside the glove, but I think when he went to make contact, his bare hand came out of the glove, and that's when the ball fell out. Well, it scores on a wild pitch. Hard to believe. Abreu strikes out. The inning is over. Kluber has struck out 11, but some daring base running by Adam Eaton has tied the game at one. at MyKiaCleveland.com to learn more. By Levin Mattress, located in all Levin Furniture and freestanding locations. And by AT&T U-verse, has more channels on the go than cable. Three innings to go. We're tied at one. Brandon Moss leading off takes. It's a called strike over the outside corner. 
Moss walked in the second. He singled in the fourth on a little cue shot off the end of the bat. Sale rocks and fires again, and this one misses low. And the count evens at one ball, one strike. Can't catch up 97 miles an hour once again from Chris Sale. He's been able to reach back when he's had to a couple of times tonight. That's his sixth strikeout. Here's the tying run scoring once again for Chicago. Perez, if he holds on to the ball, he's out. Yes, he is. Now you see it comes sliding out of that glove. He went in with two hands. Don't know if he had that ball in his bare hand. Like, and he knocked it out or what? I think he did because he picked it up with his bare hand and he was going to throw or he kind of, you know, made a motion like he was going to cock his arm and then he went right into the glove with it and dove. Boy, so close. He had him. Shattered the bat. And a nice play at first to retire Walters two down. Well, 10,000 fans will receive the 1975 replica jersey. It'll be courtesy of Shears on Saturday, May 23rd. And it's the red jerseys worn by Frank Robinson, Boog Paul, Buddy Bell, and a host of others. Come on out that day. Visit Indians.com for your tickets. Rico Cardi wearing the big red. Rico too? Cardi, yeah. yes indeed. The big man, designated hitter. <laughs> Oscar Gamble with the big throw. George Hendrick, yeah. A host of others. Dennis Eckersley, Dwayne Kuyper. Uh, Dave LaRoche, would he have been in the Dave Reds? LaRoche, yeah. yes indeed. Absolutely. Wow, good memory. Now here's Roberto Perez. Is it just me or does it seem like Chris Sale has gotten better as well he was going along. that one run should give him a little bit more of a boost a little more energy but he's been this good all night long. He really has four hits for both clubs two of the Indians have been infield hits other than that double into the gap. Ramirez had a, a 0 2 base hit in the first inning and the other two were infield hits so. Uh, it's not going to get any easier for either side. Out of play. Sales last start, he made 110 pitches. Start before that, 109. Well, I hope that you can get him out of here. He's right at 100 now, right? Yeah. High fly ball, center field. Eaton backpedaling makes the catch. One, two, three, they go again. That's seven straight set down by Chris Dale. Chris Sale, as we've reached down the seventh inning stretch, brought to you by Spitzer Auto World.
here on Sports Time Ohio. Right now, though, we got a 1 1 ball game, bottom of the seventh. Corey Kluber has struck out 11. Adam LaRoche has struck out twice in the ballgame. You know, it's one of those situations, too, when you think about Adam Eaton scoring that tying run. It's a, I mean, that's the guts of a cat burglar to try to yeah. come home on that play. If he's out, which he was, if, if Perez holds on to the ball, let me put it that way, then he's got to answer to his manager because their best hitter's at the plate. Yep. Why take an unnecessary yep. chance there? But the ball pops loose and all Robin Ventura can say is good job. Good job. One away. That's true. You know, I, and you know what he did, though? Yeah, I, I respect because when you're at third base and you, and you know you're going to throw the big man a, a breaking ball, he's heads up and he didn't hesitate. He went as soon as that ball went in the dirt. You see how far away it didn't even get to the grass. And he had enough time and speed to come in there. See if Brady had to move out of the way. So if you're right. It did. It took a lot of guts to do that. And if he's out, he would have had to answer some questions. But sometimes it pays off. He's still getting dirt, and he's probably burned his hands at home plate. Yeah. He probably left a layer or two of skin at home plate. That was full throttle. Smash to third. Nice play by Avila. Spins oh, around. Man. Throws him out. Two down. How oh, about that? Nice play, Mike. <laughs> Not an easy play, but he it gets in his glove. He just spins nice and easily. Nonchalantly gives Moss a very good throw for a good play and out number two. And again, even though this guy has is, is striking out a lot of people as a defender. You're, you're, you're in, in on every game, play yeah. because yeah. he's throwing strikes. He's not yeah. walking anybody, and you're into every swing of the bat, even though you're not getting a baseball. Well, I think, and we talked about I think he's only had one three ball count tonight. So that, that I can remember, you're right. He had the one double play ball. You know, Adam Eaton went 3 2 to start the game, so he's had two all night. But uh, you're right. I mean, the defense is in it. Even yes. though there, there were a lot of swings and misses early, there were only two balls put in play through the first first time through the order for Chicago. Boy, oh boy, we knew this was going to be a good pitching matchup, and it is. Breaking ball over the outside corner. Two of the best at their best. Yeah. And you go back to the play by Eaton. Maybe that's why you take a chance I'm in a sure game that's like why this. He did. I mean, his job is to make something happen. He hit the triple. He didn't want to stop. Hit to left, and Walters makes the grab. One, two, three. Go the White Sox. Bluebirds made 80 pitches through seven innings. We're deadlocked in one.
and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. 1-1 as we go down to the eighth inning. Top of the order for Cleveland, Chris Sale. Sit at 101 pitches on the night. Bullpen for Chicago busy. Righty lefty up. Jason Kipnis is 0 for 2 with a sacrifice bunt back in the third. Out of play. One and one. Third time through the order, the Indians were one for nine against uh, Chris Sale. Yeah, he got tougher, didn't he? Good fastball in. Really smothered Kipnis. And he waves it one to strike out. Oh, that's a pitching clinic right there. Enter now for a chance to win a trip to the All-Star Game on Fox for you and three of your friends. Upload photos at FoxSports.com. Fantastic All-Star now through June 3rd. Jose Ramirez has two hits and the game's only RBI. Now he drives one to left center field, but Cabrera calling for it makes the grab. Two down. And up comes Michael Brantley, who is 0 for 3 on the night. First two times up, Brantley hit line drives to short. One was caught by Alexi Ramirez, the other was short hopped, and then he threw him out. Last time up, though, Sale struck him out with a breaking ball away. He went 95, 97. He's, he's not messing around. He knows this is probably the end of the night. Well, he just he wants to get out of this inning and see what happens. Brantley with a liner to left, and Cabrera makes a running catch. Does he hold on? Yes, he does. Ten in a row, retired by Sale. Middle of the eighth, deadlock at one.
Braves at 3.30 Eastern, then at 7. It's the return of Baseball Night in America on Fox as the Cardinals and Royals renew their in-state rivalry. Coverage begins at 3.30 Eastern on your home for baseball every Saturday. Fox and Fox Sports 1. Alexei Ramirez will lead off the bottom of the eighth for Chicago. He is 0 for 2 tonight. Swing in on this. And it's 0 and 2. Right field. Rayburn on the run. Makes the catch. Wow. Oh, a fantastic play in deep right field by Ryan Rayburn. Boy, at the last minute, he put the glove up, and it looked like he caught it behind him. Rick, I didn't think he was going to get there. I don't think he did either, but he made a beautiful running catch. Think about the catch he made in Texas. Ran into the wall. This one, he had to reach back up over his head and on a dead sprint. Catches that ball in the tip of his glove, and it's a beautiful running catch because that's at least a double. Well done, Ryan Rayburn. Good catch. There's Tyler Flowers. He has struck out twice tonight against Corey Kluber. Pitch, pitch low, ball one. Yeah, we talked about it when we were in Texas. That catch that Rayburn made and then ran into the left field wall. That sparked this ball club. Yeah. That game where he picked him up offensively and they came back and it was uh, all Cleveland after that for the most part. That was a close pitch. He didn't get the call. It's 3 and 0. Oh. Bullseye, three and one. Well, he's going to get the probably the same pitch again. Hoover doesn't want to walk him. Going to have to locate that heater if it comes again. Out of play to the right. Now, after the first two, you got a chance of seeing a cutter or breaking ball here. He had his chance to hit the fastball and he fouled it off. We'll see if Corey comes back with three in a row. I say it's going to be a cutter or a breaking ball. Because he's going to be in swing mode. Coming back with a heater. They out pitch. Sure did. Oh, oh you got to <laughs> be kidding me. Wow. Made a really good pitch right there. Wow. Well, you're sitting out there. Guy's been out there all day long. You're going to get a pinch runner now for Flowers. I'll tell you what, on the replay, it did look like it was off the plate. But he's been so good. And well, that's his first in love all night long. I mean, he didn't walk anybody in his last start with 18 strikeouts. That's his first tonight. Emilio Bonifacio will pinch run for Flowers at first. Carlos Sanchez the batter. Bonifacio does not have a stolen base this year. He's been caught once. On Kluber's side, nine guys have tried, three have been caught. It's outside, ball one.
Chicago's closer, David Robertson, is coming in one way or the other. Runner goes. Swing and a ground ball first. Moss will take it himself. Two down. And so the go ahead run is in scoring position. Adam Eaton will be the batter. Eaton is the reason the White Sox tied the game. Yeah, you watch this ball in the dirt. He didn't hesitate. Boy, as soon as he saw it go in the dirt, he took off. He took a gamble. He ended up getting in there safe because of the drop ball. The ball came out of the glove of Perez. Yeah, he truly Tough manufactured break. that run yes, on his own. Did. The triple, yep. and then he comes home. Yes, he did. That was the, the, the lone run for the White Sox back in the sixth inning. Now he'll be up with a chance to put Chicago ahead. Him up. That's going to stay in. Yes. Roberto Perez gives way to Mike Avilas. And we go to the ninth. Still tied at one. To the White Sox closer, David Robertson, our Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen. Robertson has been just what the White Sox needed at the back end of their bullpen. 3 0. Oh. He is 8 for 9 in save situations. He's given up just 10 hits in 16 innings of work this year. Two walks against 27. Yeah, I mean this guy is—he uh, he has great stuff. That ball gets on you in a hurry. He can cut it. So the Indians are going to have their work cut off from after facing Sale, who went eight innings, four hits, a lot of run, walked two, struck out seven. The Indians haven't had a hit since a two-out single back in the fifth inning. David Murphy. Murphy will pinch hit for Ryan Rayburn. Nick Swisher on deck, then likely we'll see a pinch hitter for Mike Avilas. Probably Lonnie Chisholm. <laughs> Murphy three for nine. Two homers, three ribbies as a pinch hitter. Swing and a miss. It's 0 and 2. Avila still holds his own against right handed pitching, so. 
Not a not a given that will get a pinch hitter for him. Jam right back up the middle. What a catch by Ramirez. Tumbling to the turf in center field. Boy, he had to time that just right. Yeah. And he takes a hit away from Murphy to start the night. And I'll tell you what, it looked like he was jumping wildly, but it went right into his glove. That was an unbelievable catch. He's up at the peak of uh, that jump. He comes down with the baseball and steals a hit away from him. David Murphy. Look at Robertson pumped up. Again, that's a leadoff hit. Rayburn did that back in the uh, bottom half of that eighth inning. Here's Nick Swisher with one out of the ninth. Matter of fact, now that I think about it, he stole Ramirez. The hit from Ramirez. Ramirez says, "You're not giving me one. I'm not giving any <laughs> hits away." That's low one ball one strike. Popped him up on the infield, third baseman Connor Gillespie. Two down. Stay tuned for Indians Live, presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. It's coming up next here on Sports Time Ohio. Just when it's coming up, you can't be certain. No, sir, not the way this game has gone. It's been some tremendous pitching in this contest by both sides. Mike Avila's 0 for 3 tonight. Will bat. And Robertson with a first pitch strike. It's 0 and 2 in a hurry. Able to lay off. Then a one two pitch. Breaking ball missed. A little high as it backed up on Robertson. And the count evens at two and two. Trying to get him to go after one of his breaking balls on the last two pitches. Fastball popped. Maybe playable. Abreu, no, can't get to it. Alvarez gets another shot. That was a, I think a cut fastball. Brandon Moss would be next if Avilas keeps the inning alive for Cleveland here. Abreu backhand a flip. And Robertson beats him to the bag. The Indians go one, two, three. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Still tied in one.
And Corey Kluber has followed up his 18 strikeout gem with another terrific performance here tonight. Yeah, he uh, picked up right where he left off. He struck out seven of the first nine hitters he faced with this ball game and just continued to move around. They scored on a wild pitch, and Kluber with 11 strikeouts. That's uh, 29 in his last two starts, and he's out for the ninth, and uh, nobody even getting loose in that Indians bullpen. David Murphy stays in the game. He's in right field. Melky Cabrera, Jose Abreu, Adam LaRoche. The two, three, four hitters due for the White Sox. Low ball one. Cabrera one for three. Broken bat single in the fourth was the first hit of the game for Chicago. After Kluber had retired the first ten to start tonight. Now just starting to get loose. But Kluber still is not even at the 100 pitch mark. Right back up the gut. And it might have caught Kluber's bare hand. Yeah, he hit it. Yes, he did. He stuck a hand up. Caught him in the bare hand and deflected off. So it'll go as an infield single. You know, I don't know if Ramirez it looked like he would have gotten there. But it's reaction. You know, the ball's going up. Kluber wanted to stop that. It was right up the middle. Let's see what, what you think. It looks like he might have yeah. had a chance to get I it. think, yeah, probably. You know, but Kluber, with reactions, puts his hand up. It deflects off it. It deadens the ball right off the, uh, the finger, the palm of the hand. Tell you what, he says he's okay, but that sounded like it hit him pretty flush, didn't it? Yeah, he sure did. He's he says he's fine. He's got the big boy up, so let's hope he is. The leadoff single. Low ball one. To Brayu. Turn it loose that time. So that cut fastball down in the strike zone that he comes off of. Swings through it. I think he was trying to hit that one out. Yeah. He doesn't take many swings like that. See if he changes his mindset. Two balls and a strike. A vicious hack, but he fouls it straight back to the screen. Two and two to count. This time he gets us the straight fastball. And he fouled it straight back.
On a play to the right. Abreu's base hit in the fourth inning. A solid single to left field. Extended his hitting streak to 13 games. Melky Cabrera, the winning run, is at first. Bottom of the ninth. And the 2 2 pitch. Changed up on him and strikes him out. Boy, did he pull the string nicely there. That's his 12th strikeout of the evening. Yeah, and they bounced it. He made him chase his pitch. He didn't give in to him. He had a couple of fastballs to hit the at bat, and then he expands his zone and gets a dozen. It's a tight slider. Now Adam LaRoche, who is 0 for 3 and has struck out twice. Well, evidently, that, uh, that Ball right back up the middle that caught him flush on the pitching end didn't bother him at all. And now. Just inside, he missed there one on one. Breaking ball coming down and in. Now LaRoche is a guy. That's wow. a good pitch. That's a good pitch. He's on the plate. That front foot is open. I mean, Kluber has been there all night long. That was called a strike, but if you saw where Perez was set up, that's not where he wanted that. No, ball. he wanted that uh, that pitch right where the last pitch was. He wanted to come back in there again. One two pitch up high. To first base, Moss goes to second. They get one there. Back to first. Double play ends the inning. Boy, nice. Brandon Moss hasn't played much first base, but he did a heck of a job right there to turn an inning ending double play.
Innings are presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky all season long. Jack Link's Feed Your Wild Side. So we roll to the 10th inning. 1-1 on one our score. And the new Chicago pitcher is left-hander Zach Duke. And the Duke is 1-2 and two with a 3.18 ERA. He's per pitched 17 innings. Nine walks. 15 strikeouts. And he's got the bottom third of the Indians order. Due up here. Brandon Moss. Zach Walters and Roberto Perez. And this is uh, the second extra inning game for both teams. Indians 0-1 in extra innings. The White Sox 0-1 in extra innings. Moss squibs one towards short. Alexei Ramirez throws him out. One pitch, one away. Look at that pick by Moss to turn the double play. I was looking at him just to go for one. It took a, a late hop on him, and he had his hands. He brought him up softly enough, gets the ball over to Avilas. A 3 5 3. Well turned. Zach Walters 0 for 3 tonight. The first base side. Right back to the screen. One for 16 so far with the Indians this year. And he strikes out. Two away. Roberto Perez is one for three on the night. His double led to the Indians' only run back in the third. Gave him the lead, a lead they held until the sixth inning when Adam Eaton came home on a ball that got loose from Perez. Perez dove to tag him at the plate. He was out, but the ball came loose. Yeah, he's had a part of both the runs in this ball game. Scoring one and had a chance to tag yeah. one out. Slowly chopped to short. Ramirez again. Two down. All right, inning over. Two down. One, two, three. Go the Indians. And we go to the bottom of the tenth. Tied at one. And here comes Zach McAllister for the Indians.
Well, the pitching matchup tonight. Left-handers didn't have much success against Sale. And for Corey Kluber, they gave up one run. So tough to beat him up over the Ethan Cabrera deal. Well, no, they scored on a wild pitch is what happened. So McAllister coming on now here in the 10th inning after Kluber went nine innings, five hits, one run, walked one, struck out 12. And again, the offense, one more run for Kluber. That's 15 in his nine starts now. Pitch outside ball one. Zach McAllister facing Avisail Garcia. Honor Gillespie and Alexei Ramirez here in the bottom of the 10th. Corey Kluber had back to back starts last year in which he struck out 14 hitters consecutively. 28 strikeouts. He's done one better, two better this year with a 18 and 12, so 30 strikeouts over his last two starts. But sadly, a no decision here tonight. How about that? A four pitch walk to the leadoff man. Garcia is aboard for Chicago. No, we'll see how Robin Ventura plays this with Connor Gillespie coming up. Well, first of all, he may square around front. You've got to make McAllister throw a strike, don't you? He hasn't uh, four straight pitches out of the strike zone. Hey, look, Gillespie sitting 247. You got the the winning run at first base. You've got a, a pretty good clutch hitter on deck. They're going to run for Garrison. If they want a pinch runner or a knee pad. They want something. Trainer. Oh, okay. They were signaling, or it looked like they were pointing to the left knee of Garcia. Well, he took four pitches. I was just wondering. Do you suppose that's something that he just noticed as he was walking to first? I couldn't tell you. Because Ventura seems to be utterly surprised by this development. Well, he went up to hit, so I would assume if you hit, you got to be able to run, but he's coming out of the ball game. All right, That's let's see who he's got. Jimmy I've Shuck on the bench and Gordon Beckham. It looks like it'll be Shuck. Shuck. That's the strangest thing I've ever seen. I don't know if something happened. That's ball four. So he didn't swing the bat once. It looks like he's got a little grimace. Yeah, he's got a wince on his face. I don't know what happened. But you can see he's hobbling down the first baseline and he's coming out of the game. But to answer your question, does Gillespie bunt here in this situation? I certainly would, yes. 247, one homer, nine RBIs. He's not tearing the cover off the ball. I would certainly. Alvila's pinching at third. Taking low ball one. He may be. He, he may take until he sees a strike. Well, that's that, that's exactly right. You got to make him throw a strike. He hasn't been in the zone yet, so why help him out? Chicago has five sacrifices on the year. Gillespie, let me see. He does have not have any. Shuck, by the way, one stolen base. And Six straight. Yeah, and out goes Perez. So, yeah, yeah, you're just taking all the way. You're taking a strike. And now, in a situation where it's 2 0, if you take one, it's 2 1. A little different situation. You can start the runner, figuring you're going to get a fastball. You know, you got decent speed with Shuck, and you got a guy that could put the bat on the ball in a fastball count. 
So it doesn't necessarily have to be a bunt there. You can try and get that guy to second base with a hit and run. His manager knows if he can put this ball in play, start the runner. I'm assuming he's still got to take one here. He is taking and it's in there for a shot. Now, now we'll see what happens. He's got a good come back with a, I would think another fastball. McAllister's a fastball pitcher. So if you want to gamble and you, you don't want to bunt and give up and out, start your runner here in, in hopes that the guy can put the ball in play on the ground. There he that goes. Great jump. Gillespie punches it to left. Well, that's that's created by McAllister himself. Shuck stopped at second. By falling behind in the count, you can be much more aggressive in that situation. What do they do? They start the runner. You get another fastball. It keeps Gillespie on the ball, and he hit a fastball down the way. He hit a good pitch. But with the runner running and him having to put in play, it kept him on the baseball. So there you have it, first and second. Nobody out, and now they want to go up, and they they don't even put a sign on. McEwen goes up to talk to Ramirez. Well, again, this gets into that. A lot of times, this is an obvious sacrifice situation, but you got Giovanni Soto now batting behind him, and Soto has all of 46 at bats so far this year. Gotcha. This guy's a good clutch hitter too, and he's a good fastball hitter. I don't think he's bumping. I, I I would not disagree with that whatsoever. Pops it up. So did you see what he did? He went after it too aggressive. Infield fly rule. He will be out. One away and a big out for McAllister. And McAllister and, uh, and Alexi Ramirez would like to dig a hole and climb in it right now. Well, you know he's aggressive. He went after that first pitch. I don't know if he if it was a good pitch or not, but he was looking fastball and he got after it and uh, popped it up. Good for the Indians. Zipchinski maybe for Eaton should it get that far. A left hander left on the bench. The only bat left on the bench is Gordon Beckham now. Giovanni Soto takes a strike. Now, Soto mentioned only 46 at bats, eight hits, but two home runs. Or one of that one, and well, I can't blame a him. Good pitch. I mean, when you look at that pitch, uh, you know, on, from this angle, that's a pretty darn good pitch. You got to get two more of the plate than that. Then throw it by him, 96, and a one-two count. Outside two and two. Just absolutely ate him alive with a ninety seven mile an hour fastball. And there are two down. Just uh, went upstairs with it. He wasn't going to catch up. That ball was by him by the time he was able to swing. So a big out for McAllister, out number two. One more to go. Carlos Sanchez, 0 for 3 on the night. Sanchez, 4 out of 18 with Chicago this year.
right back to the screen. Nothing into the count. They're in the 12th inning in New York. Mets Cardinals still tied 1-1. One, one. We may be following their lead. Yeah, it looks like it the way it's going here tonight. Sanchez this year and his first RBI. Well, he had a chance to get out of it, and uh, Walters in the left field made a diving attempt. It's our Pat O'Brien play of the game. Watch it just inside the line, McAllister. Can only watch and hope it would go foul. Walters made a dive but couldn't get to it. And that's the way this one ends. A superb pitching matchup between two of the game's best, Corey Kluber and Chris Sale. They went toe to toe, each allowed a run. It was a standoff into the 10th. And Chicago wins it in the leadoff walk. How yeah. many times does that just kill you? You know, Zach came back. He had a chance. He couldn't throw strikes originally. And then I'm not sure what that pitch was that uh, Sanchez hit right there. But it was down and away. And he sliced it down the line. And a big hit. And that's uh, a one-run loss. And that's a tough one right there. With the win, Chicago has now won six in a row, eight out of nine. They're a game over 500 for the first time this year. The Indians have dropped two straight, and they fall to 14 and 23 on the season. 2-1 is the final. Indians live is next.